Can you introduce yourselves to the committee? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Honorable Chair, I am Kojoba Ajiman, the MD for the Guitar Center. I'm Ama Asante Akua, Head of Finance. Thank you very much. Uh, I look at your financial statement. As of 2020, you have 10 um, a loss in 2019 to a profit in 2020, so that's commendable. Your liquidity ratio also stable around 40, from 41 to 40. It's, it's not bad, but it's too good. Uh, some of the excess money could be used for something else than to keep it in your account. The value will be going down. You know, the dollar is uh, a very fast runner now in Ghana. Even though it was arrested and the key was given to the IG. <laughs> but he broke jail. <laughs> fast runner. So if you are keeping a lot, a lot of money here, the value could go down. Honorable. <laughs> Chairman, your advice is well noted. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Paragraph 2145. It's the need for property insurance policy for the center. Now, the auditors noted that you don't have um, insurance to cover your properties. So they are recommending that management should liaise with the ministry to ensure, to ensure the property as required by the act without further delay to mitigate the risk posed to lives and property. Management accepted the recommendation and stated that process is underway to get insurance brokers to begin with an assessment of the facility, after which board will take next steps to ensure the properties. Can you tell us the stage you have reached in this process? Mr. Chairman, the property is now duly insured. Auditors, can you confirm this for us? Honorable Chair, we cited a certificate for the insurance. Thank, Thank you. you. Paragraph 2150, Vice Chairman. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. We are talking about use of unapproved accounting software. Um, the recommendation was for you to write to the Auditor General to review and approve the current applications in use without any further delay. Have you done that? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, it's done. And um, the Audit Service IT Department are working on it. I didn't hear you, sir. I said it's done, and the Audit Service IT Unit are working on it. Auditors, could you confirm that? Honorable Chair, our unit is working on it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. The next one, paragraph 2156, is about breach of tenancy agreement, Ghana Innovation Hub. The auditors noted that the Ghana Innovation Hub is one of the tenants of ADC who benefit from the highly subsidized rent rates of $8 per square meter per month and occupied 650 square meters. Now, contrary to the terms of the tenancy agreement, the auditor checks indicate that the company sets part of their allocation that's the office space, at a commercial rate above the rate the company paid to ADC, to the public, as, as shown in the table. Now, they've temporarily let office space to four persons per month. The period is one month, and it, they charge 3,000 Ghana cities. Then another, they lent it to six persons for one month. They charge 2,000 
500 Ghana cities. Then they charge meeting room per hour at 50 Ghana cities. And then co-worker space per day, 30 Ghana cities. Now, with all these, what the auditors are recommending is that management should provide the team any document that prove as a proof of special arrangement between the ADC and Ghana Innovation Hub. Management responded that in the grant management contract document, the Ministry of Communication gave prospective bidders sustainability requirement to fulfill as one of the qualification criteria to get selected as a grant manager contract. Can you tell the committee the status of this infraction and what the auditors are asking? Because the auditors are maintaining their recommendation that management should provide the audit team a copy of quarterly financial operational reports of the company to ensure that the government obtain value for money. Can you tell the committee any information that you have regarding this particular requirement? Mr. Chairman, um, after the report from the audit service, uh, we had to re-engage the innovation hub um, people and the contract has been reviewed and we, we are seeing to it that the dictates in the contract are enforced. So they don't sublet their space to anybody again? That is what we are anticipating and we are, we are watching them closely. But so far they haven't? Not now. Uh, we have not cited any yet. Auditors, have you seen any evidence to that effect that they have re-engaged them and they have a new agreement? Honorable Chair, we cited a review of a contract which confirmed new terms and conditions. But as to whether they are complying with it, that one we cannot confirm. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Kofi. Chairman, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, it, it's true that the auditors are saying they've cited something new. But if you observe, Mr. Chairman, what is captured here, management disagreed and indicated that they had a certain arrangement with this company to do what it is that they were doing. So we would have been expecting a proof of that special arrangement they claim they had, and not an indication that they are doing something into the future, at least to this matter. And even now, they can't confirm whether this company is still doing that or not doing, not doing that. What, what's the way forward? Is it that you yourself do not have the capacity to be able to do what this company is subletting is doing, or why would you want to engage them? Why can't you confirm that they are not doing that? So, Honorable Chair, I would like to um, come in and take this opportunity to even thank the auditors for capturing this. And uh, as part of the uh, incubation hubs, most times uh, one of their uh, sustainability um, avenues are renting of space. So I think we hadn't paid much attention to what was happening to the innovation hubs because government uh, gave them the space to use. But um, for the acquired digital, digital centers, um, through government, they've provided the space, hoping that the small businesses would use up the space and thrive. We didn't know that <laughs> they were also subletting and taking monies from these companies. So it's good um, we have this information and we are going to keep a close eye 
on what actually goes on. The management of the digital centers uh, don't manage the activities at the innovation hubs themselves. They also provide their own services. So they give them the space, hoping that they also support other businesses. But we didn't know that they also rent or sublet these spaces um, to others. So we didn't even have proof till this came to our attention. And I think we would pay um, close attention uh, to their activities. Thank you, Minister. And not just are they renting the space, but they are taking commercial rate. Even if they were giving space to these other businesses at a rate commensurate with what it is they are paying because you have space, it would have been understandable. But they are taking a commercial rate, and I doubt if ADC is benefiting from this commercial rate that they are charging them, uh, uh, they are subletting from. I don't think so. It's not fair. Chairman, thank you for the opportunity. Chairman, these hearings are supposed to help reform the public sector. Let me advise that you should review your tenancy agreements with these entities and incorporate non sublease clauses into them. If you, if you take a premises for a purpose and you do not use it for the purpose for which you took it and you decide to sublet, it should lead to immediate forfeiture. It should lead to immediate forfeiture of, of the premises. So look at some of these things. Otherwise, they are rather taking money that, that ought to have come to you. And that's fraud. They are perpetrating fraud right before you and take, making more money. And so going forward, look at some of these things and, and reform the tenancy agreements with you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Minister, I, I think that this issue requires swift and immediate action. So I would suggest that, I mean, when you, you depart from this sitting, uh, you move into action. Because clearly, uh, this type of behavior cannot be condoned. The state needs money. This is public property. So a situation where some middleman will take it under the pretext of using it and then subletting it, uh, it's free money. They are, just, they are just taking free money when the state needs money. So I don't think they, they should wait. It's clearly an illegality. And once you have indicated that um, this coming to your attention would instigate action, I don't think that you should wait any further because from what we know, I mean, you would be in the right to take action against them for engaging in an activity that they are not supposed to engage in. I think it's a, it's a straightforward uh, matter. I'm grateful, Mr. Chairman. So, Honorable, please, it's been reviewed and um, all those things have been corrected. Thank you. Let's have paragraph 2166, Honorable Roxin. Chairman, the, the case of the auditors is that some rent, interestingly, uh, what we get, we others take advantage, and what is due, we are not collecting. Some rent due have not been collected for um, close to two, three years, and um, the advice is that we should recover this rent. The auditors are further advising that the, the non-availability of a, a recovery policy of, in ADC is also creating the problem. So one, whether the rent has been recovered, and two, whether you have a recovery debt recovery policy that when money is due you, you can go after the people and collect, whether you have that plan in place. 
Mr. Chairman, thank you. Um, I think when I took over, we realized that the, the, the debt portfolio was that huge. So um, uh, we set up a commercial unit to handle um, the debt situation and handling the business moving forward. So I can tell you that um, out of the astounding, about 1.1 million has been collected so far. Um, outstanding of uh, 1.5. Yeah. You've collected 1.1. Yeah. Okay. That's that's good to hear. Uh, when was the last time some recovery was made? Honorable Chair, since this is an ongoing concern, um, yeah. So when was money? the last time you got some money by way of recovery? Yesterday. Yesterday, yes. excellent, because you were coming here today. <laughs> Have you brought this the attention of the auditors? Um, uh, the recovery made so far, have you informed the auditors? We have, but we are yet to submit the... The latest one? No, not, no. Okay. Now, auditors, can you confirm that some recovery has, uh, has been made out of these monies? Honorable Chair, we were informed of some recovery, but we are yet to see documentary evidence. To, to ascertain the figure? Yes. Okay. Uh, quickly apprise the auditors of the documents in respect of this matter. Then also, do you have a debt recovery policy or plan now? The auditors rec rec recommended that you, you do have that. You should develop it, something of that nature. Yeah, we, we, we now have a debt recovery policy that has been embedded in our tenancy agreement. So even now when you come for space, you know that when you fail to pay your debt, as in the time stipulated in the contract, there are measures that we went back on to take our money. Okay, Chairman, uh, that'll be all for them on this matter. Paragraph 2172, Honorable Isaac. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, 2172 is about unauthorized write-offs of accounts receivables. Chairman, Accra Digital Center, uh, a number of companies own them various sums of uh, money, and the total amount involved is 1,087,601.92. And these debts were canceled without proper justification, no approval from your board, no approval from the Ministry of Communication, no approval from the Ministry of Finance, and no approval from Parliament. And uh, you decided to cancel the amount. So I want to find out uh, what informed your decision to write these uh, debts off? Mr. Chairman, um, the information I had was that the debts that were written off were for startups, companies that were starting their businesses and spaces were given to them. But in 2019, there was a, 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 there was a flood. There was flood which um, took off some of their um, items in the offices and some stopped operating, uh, coupled with COVID and others. So these startups folded up and they were not in existence anymore. So it informed the then management to embark on such uh, an act. But <coughs> when the report came, I took it over to the board and they, uh, we realized that the due diligence was not done. The board has reinstated the debt back into the port portfolio of of the business and um, the anomaly has been corrected. Thank you. Uh, if you look at the nature of the debts, uh, mainly they are in respect of rent and uh, electricity. Uh, I want to find out, is ADC paying the electricity for the various companies. I think then the ADC was paying for, for it, but after that experience, we realized that each startup has to
pay for it. So we've now embarked on a digitized um, payment system that you, you, you pay as you consume. So f from then, um, the system that doesn't exist anymore. W was it part of the tenancy agreement? Initially, it was. It was? Yeah. And you were happy with that? I mentioned earlier that the then agreement has been reviewed, so uh, we, we are no more using the old tenancy agreement. So you've reinstated the, the debts? Yes. Uh, how much has been recovered uh, now? None. None? Yeah. Since, uh, when, were, when were the debts reinstated? Um, I think last, um, last year during the last quarter board meeting. And, and these companies, uh, they, they are startups that has folded up. So even when you want to trace them, you can't get them. Then it means you haven't reinstated them. The, the fi figures here in the financial records has been reinstated in our books, which earlier on was written off. That would be an exercise in futility, because if the companies are folded up, you know, and you reinstate, yes, then I, where are you going to recover the monies from? But that was a recommendation the auditors made that we should reinstate the debt. So, so uh, I think that the, the, the committee can help and advise us how we can take care of it. Chairman, do you have, um, uh, auditors, do you have any evidence of what has been done so far, whatever steps they have taken? Do you have uh, evidence to that effect? Honorable Chair, we've been made aware that the figures have been reinstated in their financial uh, statement, but those financial statements are yet to be audited so that at least we can validate it and see whether it actually it has been reinstated. That's what we can say for now. I, I think I will, I will yield to you. Thank you very much. So, if those that cannot be collected because the companies have folded up, and after reinstating it in the books, you should now go through the process now to apply it through your ministry to the Ministry of Finance for the debt to be cancelled. And when that is approved, then we can take it all from your book. Well noted, Mr. Chairman. That's all you should do, because that is, you, 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 you took the debt off without going through the proper process. That is what the auditors say, put it back, okay? But you know that you can't collect them because the companies are not there. So the right thing to do is that, Use that as the reason why you cannot collect the debt and apply it to the Ministry of Finance for the debt to be cancelled. Uh, all right. You. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So that will be all for. You have. Okay, Honorable Yusuf. Chairman, thank you. Chairman, this is a very simple and straightforward uh, question. I wanted to find out when the Accra Data Center was established. And what is your mandate? The, the Accra Digital Center was established in July 2017. And uh, our mandate is to provide digital skills training, manage digital entrepreneurs, and ma manage the tech parks in Ghana. So we should put it on record that it was established in 2017. Is that what you are saying? Exactly. Chairman, thank you. That will be all for Accra Digital Center. You are discharged. But what's the import of your question? Let's have Ghana Postal Company Limited. Ghana Postal Company Limited. Can you join the table? And um, Managing Director, are you the MD? Or is that the title? Because this is a company, so it should be the Managing Director. Yes. 
Can you introduce yourselves? <laughs>